Remember that? Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. It's overwhelming how many it chapters is. there have been. It makes me want to cry a little. Wow. So many memories. Welcome to Style Like You. Wow. Say, and I'm Lily's mom. Let me say welcome to Style Like You. No? Welcome to Style Like You. My name is Elisa Goodkind, and I am the co-founder and the mom of Lily. And my name is Lily, and I am also the co-founder of Style Like You and Elisa's daughter. Style Like You is a media platform that through radically honest docu-style videos highlights the stories of diverse role models who stand proudly outside of norms and firmly in the comfort and power of the skin that they're in. Through the storytelling and through the vulnerability, it really is showing both the singularity and then the fact that we are connected at the core. I started in the fashion business in the 80s, being an assistant at all the different magazines. We were really supported to value people and talents that were not established, that were not big brands, where you don't have to take a part of yourself or dim a part of yourself. It was just such an eye-opening experience. And over the course of 20 plus years in the industry, I had experienced the complete opposite happening where the culture more and more became about marketing, about making money. The same blonde actress retouched. All of the creativity was really being stomped out in the name of brainwashing younger generations to buy certain brands. Everything just was simply about selling you things. It was simply about making you feel left out, not part of the conversation, so that ultimately you would spend lots of money and spend most of your life trying to be included. When she was starting to experience the fashion industry in this more depressing, toxic light, I was in my teens and was struggling a lot with my own body image. Dieting and losing 20 pounds and gaining 20 pounds and losing 20 pounds and gaining 20 pounds, feeling like I needed to change myself in order to be happy, in order to have style, in order to be beautiful, in order to be included. I was surrounded also through my mom's world by like all these really creative, interesting people that were like working behind the scenes in the industry, like no matter their age or their body type, you could tell that their style was like this really authentic expression. In the midst of the confusion about fashion and the industry, we shared that passion for people. We could see that people had this desire to be seen because they had been, they were being covered. They were being smothered by this media. As we turned one rock over and the other and the other and the other, it was just out poured these rainbow personalities with deep imaginative stories of how they coped with being smothered. I spent all my time not being me. I used to look in the mirror and I didn't know who I was. If there's nothing I can do to not be different, then I might as well embrace it. And now I look in the mirror and I'm like, I know who this person is. It's like a work of art every day. The very first shoot was my friend. We just went to her house with a home video camera. We were blowing bubbles. We were turning yeah. the camera sideways. We didn't know anything that we were doing. This is your amazing sneaker collection. I've always been the type of girl who goes against the grain of things. In that interview itself, she starts to talk about how much she loves how flat-chested she is. I have never had cleavage. I was very insecure about it. It was a huge thing for my whole life. So I don't wear undergarments because I don't feel like I have to. I'm very comfortable with myself. If you can own the thing about yourself that like is deemed an imperfection by society, like if you can reclaim that for yourself, it can become like your most beautiful part of yourself. And I love my, my flat chest and I love having no cleavage and I would never treat it. And I, you know, that was the first moment of acceptance. That was the first of our closet series. We then went on a crazy roller coaster with doing like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. Boom, send, 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 send. Cause we didn't have any more shoots. Like we had to go find them. My mom would also joke, you can be naked and have style. She can kind of tell who has that thing where they're really comfortable and embracing of who they are. And, that doesn't even, and then the clothes just become like second to that. Style is something that is your spirit and your identity. So we came up with the idea. Let's have them, everyone take off a layer at a time as we ask some questions. It was not thought out. Yeah. We went to the hardware store down the street like yeah. three minutes before the shoot started. We and made got the questions school. that the, we still ask we in made, like two minutes. The minute we like, conducted the first couple interviews, we were both just like moved beyond comprehension by the whole experience. And we very quickly were like, this is gonna be the next thing that we work on. We ended up calling everyone we had done a closet on. A lot of people said yes, but there were still a lot of people being like, what the fuck are you asking me to do? Like, come take my clothes off on camera, like what? The act of removing like each layer of clothing became like a metaphorical 
like removing of all of the layers of conditioning and marketing and brainwashing that we've all been fed when it comes to our bodies, our races, our genders, our sexualities. I'm like reclaiming myself like outside of all of these systems that have been designed to make me feel like I'm not enough. What's Underneath has taken us on a rocket ship to outer space because with each interview, we have personally found the medicine that we needed. It's like a collective therapy. In seeing someone take off their clothes and reveal their body, no matter how many rolls they had or cellulite or wrinkles or whatever, it helped me to like reprogram my own brain. I don't have to fix anything about my body, I just have to fix my mind and how I'm viewing my body. My goal is that that happens for everyone that's watching, whether it's something physical or internal. There's nothing about us that we need to be ashamed of. One thing that we've learned from all of our interviews is that the thing that is their biggest struggle in life is the thing that like has propelled them to their power and to their purpose and to their strength. We are all mythological. With each interview, each person says three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten things that are life-changing. By believing that and understanding that preciousness, that gift of life and that gift of coming into this world with a light and with an essence is what makes you beautiful. If everyone could stop shrinking themselves and making themselves small and step into their wholeness, we'd have a more loving world. We'd have a more holistic, interconnected, healthy relationship to each other. It's really transformed us on a personal level and each interview has been literally medicine. It has made us so happy that it's done the same thing for so many people around the world, for hundreds and thousands and millions of people around the world. We all have that kind of power to heal each other. And if you want to support our work and join this community, you can head over to patreon.com slash you to become a member. You'll have access to extended interviews, virtual events, and other opportunities to share your story and connect more deeply with the Style Like You community and us.